Hello and welcome to JHAGS RC. Today I'm going to be reviewing the HPI Savage X, an eighth scale nitro monster truck. Hell yes, here it is. Big old tires, big body. This is eighth scale, just kind of for size comparison. That's a Tamiya lunchbox. Let me scoot that back. That's a Tamiya lunchbox, which is a 12th scale. And this is one that everybody's probably seen before. That is a Stampede. So the Savage is quite a bit bigger. The Savage is quite a bit cooler. I've had this one for a little while. Done some upgrades to her. Like the Pearline body. And the flame paints. But anyway, let's get down to it. The features on this are, of course, big old tires. Four-wheel independent suspension. All steel drivetrain. Of course, you got a nitro motor. This one's been replaced. That one's my original. This is an LRP 30. This was the old um, um, K4.1, I believe it is. This was actually the first model X. So I'm kind of grading on a curve a little bit here. I've done some upgrades to this, but it's all for the most part Savage HPI stuff, but big block nitro power. Look at that. Hell yes. I personally put the tuned exhaust on here. Uh, on this one, I've done the metal spur gear. Twin vertical plate chassis, central mounted, mounted two-speed transmission up underneath my air filter there. Radio box is up in the front. Adjustable servo saver, spring for tension. Look at these A-arms, dude. These things are nice, big, thick, burly. This whole truck is a hoss. The acceleration and the speed on this, it's an LRP30, it is an aftermarket motor, uh, but I would say the new X46 is probably going to be pretty close. Uh, speed on this, I have not at, actually had it out this year with the GPS, but I would say speed is probably realistically mid-30s to maybe low 40s. I would guess probably more 35, 39 miles an hour topped out in second gear. Acceleration. Uh, the thing that's made the Savage, apart from durability, very famous is a little bit of a higher center of gravity. So she will ride nice big long wheelies. It's got great acceleration, um, especially with the tuned pipe on there. I mean, it'll, it'll pull a wheelie, it'll rip a wheelie, and it will hold it for, uh, hell, just about to you want to let off, really. Um, the steering on these models, uh, this one actually has a, when I, I bought it used off of Craigslist, uh, it has a Airtronics servo on there, uh, so the stock HPI steering servo I cannot comment on. I can, however, say that this chassis, you know, high center of gravity, big tires, lots of power. It is top heavy. Um, it does like to roll over. If you're full throttle trying to turn, you know, it does snow plow. It, it does want to push. If you let off the throttle and kind of let the chassis settle a little bit, it still turns really wide 
Um, it, it does have a high center of gravity. It does want to roll over some. But once you kind of learn how the chassis reacts, it's nothing that you can't quite you know, try to compensate for uh, before you do the run of shame and run it out of nitro fuel. The handling on this model is it's very heavy. Um, it's a very big truck, nice wide footprint. Oh yeah, she's nice and wide. Hey, yeah, what is that? You know, that's over a foot of width. Hell, 15 inch wide probably. Um, nice long wheelbase. Nice big bore plush shocks. Um, handling is kind of like a dump truck. I mean, the chassis doesn't, it will get upset, but it takes quite a bit really to get it upset. Um, it's not real smooth, you know, handling. It's not a race truck, I guess is really what I'm trying to say and boil it down to. Handling is respectable. This is in its element, in its prime, when you're launching the thing, big air, big jumps. Um, groomed racetrack, you know, not really its thing, but like BMX track, motocross track. Uh, you could take it to a skate park. That's where this is going to shine a little bit more. The durability on this machine is, man, the Savages are legendary for durability. Um, I'm probably going to piss a couple people off here. The T-Max is the one that kicked this whole segment off. You know, um, when they came out with the T-Max, Traxxas came out and threw down a three pound hammer it's a beautiful machine but when HPI came out with this especially the latest incarnations of it you know the Savage came out to that three pound hammer of a T-Max and smacked that some bitch with a ten pound sledge um, this is all steel drivetrain it's kind of hard to see and I'll see these are Right there, that orange, right there, that is anodized aluminum bulkhead braces. Um, the hubs are all very heavy duty to it. You can break a Savage, um, but it's got to be, and myself included, I have done it, it's got to be pretty knuckle-headed. You know, you're not just going to, you know, Bounce it off of a curb at half speed and shatter a front end. You can definitely break a Savage, but durability is, you know, about the best in class for eighth scale nitro monster trucks. Between the, um, I would say between like the big four. A uh, very durable machine. You can break them. Yes, they are breakable. But for the speed and the size and the weight, I think these are exceedingly durable the only long-term durability issues that really come to my mind that I have had with this machine is the wheel nuts and this is true on every machine man Loctite 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 and check these nuts about every two or three runs and I've make sure that you have a good six-point socket because these Flange nuts right here are very shallow. It's hard to, if your um, socket starts to get a little bit of wear, you will round those off. So make sure that you tighten these every couple, three runs. Make sure they're Loctited or you will be stripping wheel hexes and replacing wheels. And the only other real durability issue that I can think that I've had with this was when I replaced the stock motor with this LRP, I had to step up to the SS style metal spur gear. I kind of think the new Savages have the metal spur gear, but I am not 100% sure. Um, I kept on stripping that dude with this motor. Put that in there. Did not have a problem. Um, on the other durability thing I can think that Savage people are going to say, the um, the differentials. Make sure that they are proper, 
properly shimmed. Uh, this one is still running the old style. I have a Savage Flux that is running the new bulletproof machined gears. Have not had the only problem that I have had with that is I am shearing screws off in the differential housings. The gears themselves have been fine. But um, that is the only durability issues that I can think that I have had on really either one of my savages that haven't been just from something completely nasty. Um, let's see here. For the money, uh, you can buy the SS model. You can build your own kit. I think you add your own electronics if you like something like that. Um, that one is about $400, I believe. You can buy the Savage X model um, ready to run controller um, glow plug driver blah 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 I think last check they're about 470 I think between between 450 and 500 <clears throat> I believe it's gonna be a really good ballpark price it is a little bit expensive of a buy-in yes all of these trucks are <clears throat> however the thing that I like about the Savage is that it doesn't handle as well as what a T-Max does. Um, you do not have a lot of the durability issues. Man, I'm going to get lit up on this. You do not have a lot of the durability issues that you have with the T-Max as far as bulkheads, A-arms, um, drivetrain, plastic gears, steel dog. This might... and. This is the same money as a T-Max. Um, if you're looking for something to bash extremely hard, and you want to, and you can sacrifice a little bit of handling, I would say, you know, this would be your machine. Um, the fun factor on this machine, man, there is nothing more fun than having a pretty much a nitro-powered dump truck or a nitro powered logging wagon think of putting a top fuel engine into a Kenworth dump truck loaded down with gravel and it's kind of the same thing fun as hell um, I completely love them I actually have not been driving this one a whole lot and I might throw it on Craigslist just to see what kind of offers I get possibly because I have a flux model and man I drive the Schneikes out of that one completely love it <clears throat> now, uh, I do want to close the review I mean I definitely give it dude a thumbs up I do want to say however that it has been a pain in the ass to get parts for HPI products lately uh, they have went through a bankruptcy I believe it was uh, Ritmax I think is a company that bought HPI out and it can yes it can be a pain to try to get parts for these and it can be kind of a pain to get parts for a Savage model in particular because there's been so many running changes that HPI makes for durability on these rather than what some other companies do and let the aftermarket come around for their shortcomings. So the best place to um, find updated part numbers and that kind of thing if you have a Savage is to go on um, HPI Racing, I believe it is, dot com and go to the Savage section and it will show you the updates and some of what you need, you know, if you want to upgrade an older Savage, kind of like, you know, what this one was, up to the newest, kind of latest, greatest stuff. Um, but, yeah, man, it can be a pain in the ass to get parts. I waited for six months for differential gaskets for my Flux. Um, luckily, man, I had a, a pretty good pile of spare parts. I'm kind of serious about my toys. So I keep a pretty good amount of spare parts laying around. But, man... Mm bear with it you know it's kind of really times like this you know that a company like that kind of needs support and um, I would say even with that you can still get the parts I still recommend the Savage um, thanks for watching let me know what you think